What's going on everybody? Thanks so much for tuning in for today's episode of Detail Garage. I'm Nick and this is Henry and today we're going to be showing you guys the proper steps and why it's so important to wash your vehicle, especially on this brand new Acura NSX. Now the owner recently had it ceramic coated and after further inspection we can see that there's a lot of areas that were missed and improperly applied so we're going to start by stripping off anything that's on the surface to do the next step in the detailing process. So Henry explain to us what we need to do next and also what's going to happen following the detailing process. All right so to begin the process we actually already have a two bucket method system set up. The reason why we have a two bucket method system set up you guys might say is not dirty but this car does actually have a lot of exhaust fumes so whenever it's actually throwing an exhaust fume especially because we live in LA instead of it going back it just goes up in the air lands back onto it and we could potentially scratch. So this is why we have our two dirt traps, which I'm gonna go ahead and insert. Let me just remove this and our foam cannon. So what you wanna do is simply go ahead and insert the dirt trap at an angle to reduce air bubbles. That's right, by putting it at an angle, this helps to seat it at the bottom of the bucket without trapping air underneath it. This will give you that airtight seal and also it keeps it from rising back up at the top. Now also the reason why we wanna make sure that's nice and tight at the bottom is when we come back with our dirty wash mitt, as we're scrubbing, we don't want it to move around and cause the dirt to come back up in the clean water. And again, that's gonna keep it from coming back to the car. So now I'll actually go ahead and prep our foam cannon. The reason why I have Mr. Pink and Clean Slate, one, Mr. Pink's gonna foam up a little bit better. Clean Slate doesn't really foam up at all. It's gonna add extra lubrication, extra cleaning power. So simply apply one ounce of Mr. Pink and one ounce of Clean Slate. This is gonna ensure I remove any glazes, sealants, waxes, ceramics that might be sitting on the surface. So I won't, whenever they re-clear ball this car, it won't be hard to bond. Correct. So I'll go ahead, put the little tube back on and you'll go ahead and stir it. Do not shake it. Cause if you do shake it, you'll cause bubbles in here. We don't want it to bu bubble up in here. We want more water and more solution just to be mixed in, less bubbles. We will also be having our Chanel wash mitts. The reason why I love Chanel wash mitts is because it has these cool noodles that's gonna trap all the dirt, keep them from spreading out right on the car. And especially when I come back and I dip my wash mitt into the dirt trap, it's gonna help it release them a little bit better. And also we've chosen to get two brand new wash mitts as well as two new buckets and two new dirt traps because one, this is a very expensive vehicle and it's also brand new, but also the owner of this car is enormous. And uh, we definitely don't want to cause any kind of beef with him because <laughs> I'm serious as a rod knot guys. This guy, he can do some damage. So we're taking the precaution by giving it the thick lather of foam, which is going to help emulsify the abrasive particles of dirt. And also with the brand new wash mitts, we're not running the chances of cross-contaminating with something we've used on another vehicle. It just prevents any kind of further damage that's been done to the car. We're going to go and rinse off the vehicle first to knock down any loose grammar debris. Then we're going to foam it up, then we'll scrub it. Take it away, Nick. <laughs> So Henry just finished rinsing down the NSX using the pressure washer and you saw that he kept a reasonable amount of distance between the vehicle and the pressure washer itself. And the reason for this is obviously because there's at least 2,000, maybe 3,000 PSI coming out of the pressure washer and that can cause damage to sensitive surfaces and it also can damage vinyl wraps and things like that. So we keep that in mind whether you're working on a newer car or even an older car, just the distance is key so you don't damage the vehicle. But now we're going to set up our two buckets and as Henry mentioned we're using the two bucket method which means that we have one for soap and then one for rinsing. And now we're going to start by adding a little bit of Mr. Pink to our wash bucket. You can use one to two ounces, maybe even three if you're working on a really dirty car. And also to have the same kind of cleaning power, we're going to add about the same amount of clean slate. And this way we're ensuring that we're removing any kind of old layers of glaze, seal on our waxes or any kind of body oils that were left behind. And also the same solutions in our foam cannon, but Henry forgot to mention that whenever you want to get really thick foam, use warm water and that helps to improve the foaming action. So now we're going to go on to the foaming process and we'll give that a moment to dwell before we come back with our wash mitts. That's foam. <laughs> Now we have the NSX foamed up. Now it's time to activate the suds and then start scrubbing from top to bottom. Hit it, Nick. Woo! Thank you, Nick. So, so now I'll go ahead and get my wash mitt, get it very sudsy, very lubricated. And then I'll go to the top of the car and I'll work in linear motions from top straight all the way down to the bottom. You always want to go in straight lines. The reason why if you get a 
rock, wood chip, or any contamination that might be in your wash mitt and you go in circular motion, you're going to cause a swirl mark. A straight line is easier to polish out than a swirl mark. So simply, once you're finished scrubbing down, you come to your rinse bucket, you rinse your wash mitt at the bottom of the dirt trap, you take your wash mitt out, and you wring it out to get all the contamination and grime out of it for a scratch-free wash. You go back to your wash bucket, and you go back to scrubbing. So we've just brought the NSX into the detail garage and we've tried it using an air blower and the reason for that is because this car has a lot of crevices and tiny cracks where water gets trapped and it also causes water spots. So by using an air dryer, it gently blows it off the surface and we come back with a clean microfiber towel to wipe it off and we chose to go with the Woolly Mammoth because one, it's very plush so it absorbs a lot of water, but it's also very soft so it doesn't induce any kind of scratches or swirls. But now we're moving on to the next step and Henry, what are we going to be doing? So now, Nick, we'll be moving on to the claim process. The reason why we have to clay out the surface of the vehicle is because we want to remove any contamination, especially because it's going to get clear broad. You don't want to cover up any contamination. You want the proper bond from the clear bra to the surface, especially because we're going to polish it out. We don't want to clear bra any scratches. So we'll be using a light clay bar because this car is fairly new and it's also been detailed recently. But the light clay bar is more intended for the newer cars or cars that are, you know, pretty well kept up. And basically what a clay bar is if you're new to the channel or you're new to detailing, but basically this is a very sticky substance and it extracts contaminants from the pores of the paint. And what we recommend doing is pulling off a small piece and then kneading it up into a patty that covers about three fingers. This way, in case you do drop it, you're going to have to throw it away because it will collect any kind of rocks or debris from the ground. And obviously you don't want to bring it back to your car because that'll start scratching it and marring it. So you want to make sure that you only use a little bit just in case you do drop it, but also that you're using a dedicated clay lubricant. This way you're going to add the proper lubrication so it's not marring the paint. And if you're unfamiliar with what marring is, that's a collection of tiny scratches that gives your paint a very cloudy look. But this is also helping to cleanse the paint as you clay. This way you don't need a wash or anything like that, just simply wipe off any of the excess. So now we just finished cleaning the surface of the NSX. Now it's time to polish it. Our choice of machine for today is gonna to be a Torque 15 DA because it has a 15 millimeter throw. It doesn't bog down any corners. It's also dual action. And our choice of pad is gonna be the orange Beat'em Hex cutting pad with V36. We, we're going to go with V36 just to test out the area to see if we actually like the cut. If we like the cut we're getting, we're going to keep going. If you do not like the cut you receive when you're polishing out with V36, we recommend bumping it down to V34. Right, Nick? Right. So what we're doing here is we're polishing off the old coating that's on there because there's areas where it wasn't wiped off and it's kind of blotchy. And since the owner wants to put a new coating on there or a clear bra, we want to make sure that nothing's left behind. This way it's not locked into the surface. So by using V36, we're going to diminish anything that's on the top layer. And it's also going to remove any kind of fine scratches that may be in the clear coat. And also the orange pad makes it a very easy way to ensure that we're not putting too much pressure on the surface, but we're also removing anything that's going to cause any kind of blemishes and also restore any kind of gloss. And lastly, we'll be using pad conditioner to moisten our pad, keep it fresh, keep it moist, so you can reduce friction onto the paint and it won't cause any pigtails or marring. So to begin, we're shaking up our V36. This mixes all the chemicals together. This way all the abrasives have a chance to actually work into the polish. And we're going to be using about five dime sized dots for our pads here. That's about the size of one hex. And this is going to be for about every two by two foot panel. But we'll spread it out on the lowest speed setting. This way we have even coverage of the product. And then we'll bump it up to the highest speed setting or speed setting six on the dual action polisher. And this way we actually can break it down and give it the proper work time. But if you're new to polishing, what you want to do is make sure that the machine is completely flat at all times. This way it's not bogging down or cutting into the paint at an uneven rate and also that you have the machine moving about an inch per second this way it doesn't get hot in one area that causes burns or marring and lastly you want to make sure that the polish has gone completely clear before you pull off this way it's completely broken down and had the proper work time so that you can remove any kind of scratches or swirls or in the case of this car any kind of old coatings <laughs> So there you have it guys. After using V36, we removed that light layer of ceramic coating or whatever else that was on the surface, including minor scratches and swirls. And also now this is going to ensure that it's going to have a fresh bond to the new ceramic coating or clear bra 
But before we do that, we want to make sure that the surface is completely clear. So we're going to use Wipeout to make sure there's no residues or body oils or polish left on the surface. This way, the bonding of the ceramic coating or the clear bar will last as long as possible. So if you guys like this video, don't forget, like it, comment, and subscribe. Comment down below. Let us know what type of videos you want to see. And we'll see you guys next time right here at the Camel Guys Detail Garage. Pull, pull up to the detail garage. We've got some quick detail spray. I'm gonna get laid.